This Wanik Science video is about biochemistry, the chemistry of life. Life depends on chemistry. And just as buildings are made from bricks, steel, glass, and wood, living things are made from atoms. When you eat food or breathe oxygen, your body uses these materials in chemical reactions that keep you alive. If the first task of an architect is to understand building materials, the first job of a biologist is to understand the chemistry of life. So to begin our discussion on biochemistry, we really have to start with the atom, which is the basic unit of matter. Here we have carbon as it would be seen on the periodic table. Carbon is an example of an atom, and it's made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Let's begin by looking at the different regions of an atom. In the middle portion is a dense region called the nucleus, and in the nucleus you will find protons with a positive charge, and neutrons with a neutral or no charge at all. Carbon specifically has six protons and six neutrons. But outside the nucleus, you'll find a region called the electron cloud, where you will find negatively charged particles called electrons. Notice that the electron cloud contains six electrons with negative charges, which balance out the six protons with a positive charge. So six positives and six negatives make a totally neutral atom. But carbon's not the only important element in biology. Another one might be oxygen, different from carbon by the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons it contains. Oxygen has eight protons balanced out by eight electrons and eight neutrons. But this isn't always a pattern for all elements. Here's another example, hydrogen, another important element in biology, where it has one proton balancing out one electron, but it has no neutrons at all. So what are the important elements in biology? Well, we looked at three, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen, but there's more. Nitrogen is a big important element, and then there are lots of other elements of smaller quantities, like magnesium and sulfur, sodium and chlorine, potassium, calcium. You might recognize these from cereal boxes or food labels. But it's not just atoms and elements for which biologists are concerned about. Biology is really concerned about how chemical reactions take place and how chemical bonds happen. So here we have an example of carbon and hydrogen. And alone, they're not very useful, but in chemical bonds, they do an awful lot. Here we have carbon with an, an electron that is being shared with hydrogen. And this interaction causes these two elements to be stuck together in a chemical compound. And this is called a covalent bond, where electrons are being shared. This is different than an ionic bond, where we can see an example with sodium and chlorine. In this example, you can see that sodium loses an electron and chlorine gains that electron, but it isn't shared at all. Ionic bonds are a transfer of electrons from one atom to another. So what happens? Because sodium loses its one electron, it has an imbalance between protons and, and electrons, resulting in sodium becoming positively charged. It lost one negative particle. But chlorine has now gained a negative charge. It's gained that electron, so it becomes negative. And in nature, opposites attract. So sodium becomes positive, chlorine becomes negative, and as they attract each other, they actually form a, another type of bond. This is called an ionic bond, almost like two magnets sticking together. But notice, though, that the carbon and the hydrogen bond, because they're being sharing that electron, it's almost as if that electron wraps around the two of them. So it's a very strong chemical bond. Whereas the ionic bond, where the sodium and the chlorine, that bond is relatively weak in comparison. And it really doesn't take much to separate that. Most ionic bonds can be separated by water. So what does this have to do with biology? Well. Contained within that chemical bond is energy, the energy of that electron. And energy is the ability to do work. And we measure this energy in biology in the form of a calorie, or specifically a kilocalorie. We also know that energy is neither created nor is it destroyed. So when we make a chemical bond, energy is being stored in that bond. When we break that chemical bond, energy is released from that chemical bond. And so as energy cycles through biological systems, it's a matter of making and breaking chemical bonds.
So examine the four molecules down below. You can see that you've got multiple arrangements of carbon and hydrogen bonds. And of all four of these, can you guess which one stores the most energy? Well, it's probably the one that has the most chemical bonds. And just looking at that, that might be isooctane or benzene. Certainly methane probably has the lowest amount of energy stored as a chemical bond. Respond to the following reflection in your notebook. From a biochemical standpoint, explain how these two pictures below express ideas that are similar and how they are different. Include and underline the following terms as you see below.